Hello everybody, welcome back to the Praetorian. I'm Roger Hansen and today I am going to do another reading from my notes that I'm uh, transferring from Facebook notes onto video. And this one is about Ralph Waldo Emerson. <clears throat> I took this note down on May the 6th, 2009 and it was back whenever I was doing research on the transcendentalist of the 1800s I've got some other videos that I've put in my uh, Facebook page the Praetorian as well as the Praetorian on YouTube which is in just the Praetorian uh, playlist but that these I, those videos are in those playlists and you can find them there but with that all said, I am now going to go ahead and start the reading on uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. <clears throat> Ralph Waldo Emerson was born on May the 25th, 1803. 1803-05-25. Okay, I see what it is. 1803 05 would be April or May and then the 25th. Earlier I was having an issue I couldn't understand what that meant but now I do. He was born in Boston, Massachusetts. His death was April the 27th, 1882 at the age of 78 in Concord, Massachusetts. His school or tradition was Transcendentalism his main interest was poetry, notable ideas, abolitionism, <clears throat> individualism, non-dualism, self-reliance. He was influenced by Michael Del Montaigne, Vetus, William Words Wordsworth, Immanuel Kant, George Wilhelm, and Friedrich he Hegel. And he influenced Henry David Thoreau, Margaret Fuller, Orestes Bronson, or Brownson, Walt Whitman, Harold Bloom, Frederick Nietzsche, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr., Charles Ives, George Santayana, Ivan Kanikar, Ralph Waldo Emerson. 25th May 1803 through 27th 1882 was an American essayist, philosopher, poet, and leader of the Transcendental Movement in the early 19th century. His teachings directly influenced the growing and new thought movement of the 1800s. Emerson gradually moved away from the religious and social beliefs of his contemporaries, formulating and expressing the philosophy of transcendentalism in his 1836 essay, Nature. As a result of this groundbreaking work, he gave a speech entitled The American Scholar in 1837, which is considered to be America's intellectual declaration of independence. He once said, make the most of yourself, for that is all there is of you. Considered one of the great orators of the time, Emerson's enthusiasm and respect for his audience enraptured crowds. His support for abolitionism late in life created controversy and at times he was subject to abuse from crowds while speaking on the topic. However, this was not always the case. When asked to sum up his work, he said his central doctrine was the infin infinitude of the private man. <clears throat> Biography Emerson was born in Boston, Massachusetts, son of Ruth Haskins and, the, and Reverend William Emerson, a, a, unitar a Unitarian minister from a well 
known line of ministers. Emerson's father, who called his son a rather dull scholar, died in 1811, less than two weeks short of Emerson's eighth birthday. The young Emerson was subsequently sent to the Boston Latin School in 1812 at the age of nine. In October 1817, at 14, Emerson went to Harvard, Harvard College and was appointed the freshman's president, a position which gave him a room free of charge. He waited tables at uh, Commons, a dining hall at Harvard, reducing the cost of his board to one quarter of the full fee, and he received a scholarship. The compliment, no, to complement his meager salary, he tutored and taught during the winter vacation at his Uncle Ripley School in Waltham, Massachusetts. After Emerson graduated from Harvard in 1821 at the age of 18, he assisted his brother in a school for young ladies established in his mother's house after he had established his own school in Chelmsford, Massachusetts. When his brother went to Gottingen to study divinity, Emerson took charge of the school. Over the next several years, Emerson made his living as a schoolmaster, then went to Harvard Divinity School and emerged as a Unitarian minister in 1829. A dispute with church officials over the administration of the communion service and misgivings about public prayer led to his resignation in 1832. Emerson met his first wife, Ellen Louisa Tucker, in Concord, New Hampshire, and married her when she was 18. She died of tuberculosis at the age of 20 on February 8, 1831. Emerson was heavily affected by her death, visiting her grave daily and once every even opening the coffin to see for himself that she was dead. Despite his marriage, there was ev evidence pointing to Emerson's being bisexual. During early years at Harvard, he found himself strangely attracted to a young freshman named Josh Gay about whom he wrote sexually charged poetry. Gay would be only the first of his infatuations and interests, with Nathaniel Hawthorne numbered among them. Emerson toured Europe in 1832 and later wrote of his travels in England, English traits in 1856. During this trip, he met William Words Wordsworth Samuel Taylor Coleridge, John Stuart Mill, and Thomas, Car Thomas Carlyle. Emerson maintained contact with Carlyle until the, the latter's death in 1881. He also served as Carlyle's agent in the U.S. His travels abroad brought him to England, France, England, France in 1846. Italy and the Middle East. In 1835, Emerson bought a house on the Cambridge and Concord Turnpike in Concord, Massachusetts, now open to the public as the Ralph Waldo Emerson House, and quickly became one of the leading citizens in the town. He married his second wife, Lydia Jackson, of Plymouth, Massachusetts. In Concord, in 1835, he called her Lydian, and she called him Mr. Emerson. Their children were Waldo, Ellen, Edith, and Edward Waldo Emerson. Ellen was named for his first wife at Lydia's suggestion. Emerson lived a financially conservative lifestyle. He had inherited some wealth after his wife's death though he brought a lawsuit against the Tucker family in 1836 to get it. He did, however, pay the rent of his neighbor Bronson Alcott. 
Emerson. <clears throat> sorry. Emerson is buried in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, Concord, Massachusetts. Literary career. Ralph Waldo Emerson, September 1836. Emerson and other like-minded intellectuals founded the Transcendental Club, which served as a center for the movement. The group did not publish its journals, The Dial, until eight, July of 1840. Emerson anonymously published his first essay, Nature, in September 1836. In 1838, Emerson was invited into Divinity Hall, Harvard Divinity School, for the school's graduation address, which came to be known as the Divinity School Address. Emerson discounted biblical miracles and proclaimed that while Jesus was a great man, he was not God. His, his comments outraged the establishment and the general protestants pro, pro, Protestant community. For this, he was denounced as an atheist and a prisoner of young men's mind. Despite the roar of critics, he made no reply, leaving others to put forward a defense. He was not invited back to speak at Harvard for another 30 years, but the but by the mid 1880s, his position had become standard. Unitarian Doctrine. In January of 1842, Emerson lost his first son, Waldo, to scarlet fever. Emerson wrote of his grief in the poem Thr Thr Threnody, Threnody and the essay Experience in the same year. William James was born and Emerson agreed to be his godfather. In the 1840s, Emerson was hospi hospitable to Nathaniel Hawthorne and his family and appears to have, heavy in have heavily influenced Hawthorne during these three years. Emerson made a living as a popular lecturer in New England and the rest of the country outside of the South. During several scheduled appearances he was not able to make, Frederick Doug Douglass took his place. Emerson spoke on a wide variety of subjects. Many of his essays grew out of his lectures. Emerson associated with Nathaniel Hawthorne and Henry David Thoreau and often took walks with them in Concord. Emerson encouraged Thoreau's talent and early career. The land on which Thoreau built his cabin on Walden Pond belonged to Emerson. While Thoreau was living in Walden, Emerson provided food and hired Thoreau to perform odd jobs. When Thoreau left Walden after two years' time, it was to, it was to live at the Emerson house with Emerson. No, while Emerson was away on a lecture tour, their close relationship fractured after Emerson gave Thoreau the poor advice to publish his first book. A week on the Concord <clears throat> and Merrimack Rivers without extensive drafts and directed Thoreau to his own agent who made Thoreau split the price risk of publishing. The book found few readers and put Thoreau heavily in debt. Eventually the two would reconcile some of their differences, although Thoreau privately accused Emerson of having drifted from his original philosophy, and Emerson began to view Thoreau as a, mis uh, a misanthrope. Emerson's eulogy to Thoreau is largely credited with the latter's negative reputation during the 19th century.
Emerson was noted as being a very abstract and difficult writer who nevertheless drew large crowds for his speeches. The heart of Emerson's writings or writing were his direct observations on his journals, which he stated which he started keeping as a teenager at Harvard. The journals were elaborately indexed by Emerson. Emerson went back to his journals, his bank of, of experiences and ideas, and took out relevant passages which were joined together in his dense, concentrated lectures. He later revised and polished his lectures for his essays and sermons. He was considered one of the great orators of the time, a man who could enrapture crowds with his deep voice, his enthusiasm, and his egalitarian respect for his audience. His outspoken, un uncompromising support for abolitionism later in life caused protest and jeers from crowds when he spoke on the subject. However, this was not always the case. He continued to speak on abolition without concern for his popularity and with increasing r radicalism. His attempt his attempted no he attempted with difficulty not to join the public arena as a member of any group or movement and always retained a, a stringent independence that reflected his individualism. He was always insistent that he wanted no followers but sought to give man back to himself as a self-reliant individual. Emerson's journals show that he was concerned with the evil of slavery from his youth forward, and he even dreamed that he might somehow deliver slaves from bondage. As a minister, Emerson frequently used slavery as an example of a human injustice, but it was not until 1837 that Emerson was provoked by the murder of an abolitionist publisher Elijah P. Lovejoy in Alton, Illinois into delivering a moderate anti-slavery address. At this point, Emerson still maintained that reform was best achieved by the moral suasion of individuals rather than by the militant action of groups. Over the next seven years, Emerson read more deeply into the horrors of slavery. His fears concerning his, its expansion grew, and he acquired a deep admiration for the abolitionist movement, which he expressed in a moving speech in Concord in August 4th, 1st, 1844. He stated, We are indebted mainly to this movement and to the continuers of it for the popular discussion of every point of practical ethics. Thereafter, he was welcomed by the abolitionists with enthu enthusiasm. In 1845, Emer Emerson's journal records records that he was reading the Bhagavad Gita in Henry Thomas Colebrook's essays on the Vedas. Emerson was strongly influenced by the Vedas, and much of his writing was strong shades of non-dualism. One of the clearest examples of this can be found in his essay, The Oversoul. We live in succession, in division, in parts, in particles. Meantime, meantime, within man is the soul of the whole, the wise silence, the universal beauty to which every part and particle is equal, equally related, the eternal one, 
and this deep power in which we exist and whose be beatitude is all accessible to us is not only self sufficing and perfect in every hour but the act of seeing and the thing seen the seer and the spectacle and the spectacle spectacle and the spectacle the subject and the object are one we see the world piece by piece as the sun the moon the animal the tree but the whole of which these are shining parts is the soul Emerson was strongly influenced by his early readings of the French essayist Montaigne. From those compositions, he took the conversational, subjective style and the loss of belief in a personal God. He never read Kant's work, but instead relied on Coleridge's interpretations of the German transcriptional idealist. This led Emerson's non-traditional ideas of soul and God. Emerson's collect collected essays, first 1841 and second 1844 series, including his seminal essays on history, self-reliance, compensation, spiritual law, love, friendship, prudence, heroism, the oversoul, circles, intellect, and art in the first, and the poet, experience, character, manners, gifts, natures, nature, politics, and nominalists and realists in the second, is often considered to be one of the 100 greatest books of all time. Well, I, I've come to the end of that reading. Um, like I said, I am writing this to get my notes off of Facebook and transfer them over to video form. If you want to hear this again, it will be on my page, The Praetorian in the video section for transcendentalists in YouTube on YouTube it'll just be in my playlist that's called the Praetorian but it will be there and if like I said if you guys are interested in the transcendentalists or the, the transcendentalists of 1800s is more of a better way of saying it but because that's where they really did a lot of their uh, stuff and they were real clo closely connected to the abolitionists during the Civil War. So, if you're interested in that, I do suggest that you listen or read uh, something about it because it's a pretty good story. So, with that, yeah, I will say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, give a thumbs up, make a comment, give it, me some feedback feedback is welcome and appreciated and just be nice you know what I mean try to keep it calm uh, you know calm and collective that's what the, the internet's about about sharing uh, open ideas and you know all that so thanks for listening again and have a good day